Right. Um, there we go. And I think um, we'll spend more time, obviously, on the, on the final four steps, um, because that's the remainder of this chapter. But um, I think one of the elements um, that a lot of people in this industry struggle with is um, specifically, let's get our number one uh, joining us as well. Welcome, Ruan. Um, and I think um, and that is dealing with um, dealing with complaints, dealing with objections. Uh, you're trying to sell something. You've done a fantastic job. You've got a great sales pitch. I mean, you thought, wow, a lot of effort went into this. And in, in your opinion, it went very well. And then the customer just throws um, like a glass of cold water in your face by objecting to a specific um, point that you've made or to the product that you're trying to sell. There are different ways of dealing um, with these objections, which we'll obviously look at, and that goes hand in hand with how you negotiate to then close the sale, and then obviously follow up to ensure that the customer is happy, because they might leave satisfied, but it does not mean that they are satisfied um, for a number of reasons. Um, but we'll get to that as we progress through the chapter. Right, what we did then is the opening, I'm highlighting as I go along. What's important about the opening is that you have to deliver a fantastic first impression because you only have one first impression. Um, so in other words, as it says on the next screen, it's not how you um, um, necessarily close the sale, it's how you open. Because if you open badly, <laughs> there won't be an opportunity later on to close. Um, you might be shut down even before you can attempt to close um, the deal. So opening is very important, and that usually starts with a nice, proper, professional introduction. Um, your look, your appearance, your hygiene, um, your mannerisms, all of those aspects combined is extremely important for, um, for you to um, provide a very good first impression. Um, furthermore, the next step would obviously be then to identify the problem. Um, it's more effectively done if you specifically on, um, ask two types of questions. We ask open-end um, questions, as, um, as it's referred to. Those are questions that require more than one word um, answers. It's not just a question of, um, a closed question would be, sir, would you like this car in red or white? Um, then obviously they have to choose between red and white. Um, if it's um, uh, open in question, it would be something similar to um, you do show interest in this particular model, sir, but there's a few other models. Do you um, Are you set on this particular one? I should just show you in a few other models as well. Or, or maybe what um, what model car are you currently driving? Um, if they say VW Golf, then said, would you um, which in, be interested in, in the latest Golf? Um, or are you looking for something else? Maybe SUV. That would be a question that will lead you to determine exactly why the customer needs a new vehicle. It could be, as I've um, um, suggested with one of the questions now, that um, like many years ago when my family arrived, um, it was me, my wife, and the Labrador, and um, all kinds of surfing gear and sport equipment and bicycles in the back of the bucky. All of a sudden, you know what, now you need a little baby seat, um, before you know there's two baby seats um, and you just cannot um, use that particular vehicle um, as, a, as a family vehicle anymore. So you're in the market because your um, specific needs have changed. And um, very often um, a good way of determining what you need to sell to the customer or what um, is by asking open-end questions where they will indicate to you um, the motivation for um, for looking at the products that you are offering. It helps you as well to determine exactly where you need to steer the conversation, um, in what direction, towards what particular product um, you need to steer the conversation. Um, otherwise, you're going to be presenting something to somebody and then and they say, you know what, actually, uh, I was just looking for a, um, for a um, specific type of vehicle um, and then you've actually wasted your time. Um, it also shows that you have listened to the customer um, and that is always a good thing. Um, right, 
the presentation itself. Make sure that when you do the presentation, um, it could be a verbal presentation, there could be visuals involved, is that you um, sell the benefits that the customer will experience if he or she buys your product uh, and not just um, focus on the features that the product offers. Very often nowadays with well-informed customers due to um, information available um, on the internet and other mediums, they come prepared. Uh, they usually come, mostly come prepared or mostly at least have an idea of what features the product they are replacing, for instance. I need a new printer or I need a new cell phone. When you go to the shop, you at least know what functions your current uh, washing machine or co copier or cell phone is offering and you would be happy with those and you want at least that in your new product. Okay, so they usually come prepared, they know what the features are, they also um, nowadays it's well published and available for customers to in advance um, study the features that a particular product will offer um, and therefore it's no point in you um, it's no point in you then just um, repeating what they know already. It's more important to focus then on what those specific features can do for the customer. And if it actually offer them a benefit, and maybe I should rather be looking at something different. Right. How do we deal with objections? How do we deal with objections? Well, um, you guys, some of you, who's in a relationship um, that's long, that's lasted longer than two weeks so far at this point? Who's in a personal relationship? Girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. I mean, any um, 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 relationship. Who's in a relationship? Nobody. Come on, I know that's not true. I am. Right, Larissa, tell me. Um, occasionally, there's obviously misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that leads to, uh, that leads to um, a fight. Sometimes um, we pick fights because we want some excitement, but usually in, 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 in a... A traditional relationship, um, at some point there will be misunderstanding. Um, maybe it's because of different values, maybe it's because, and often it's because, and um, you tell me, why would you say are there often misunderstandings? Um, well, I guess it comes down to communication. Oh, and what is the crucial component of communication? listening <laughs> of course yes <laughs> and that's the first step if you want to be successful in dealing with objectives a take the emotions out of it don't take the objection personally person is not saying no to you the person is saying no to the product that the, that you're trying to sell to to him or to her so don't take it personally rather um, 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 focus on the feature um, on the features and the benefits of the product However, misunderstanding is usually um, the mother of all confusion is the fact that we do not listen um, because, um, oh, geez, I'm talking about that classic example at the moment. I walked into the lunch um, yesterday afternoon after my last class finished and my, my, my youngest son in grade 11 is, is just um, lounging. And um, but it, I thought when I opened my study door that there was a, that there's a crowd of 15 people in the room, but he was on his own. There was him and the dog lying on the couch watching Tilly, and he was watching Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh my word! Talk about not allowing each other to get a word in. There is no listening there. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to follow the conversation to start with. And that's my, that, and I think that's why it's so crucial when dealing with objections that you give that customer um, the opportunity to tell them, uh, to tell you, A, what you're doing wrong, A, what you're not saying, and that's usually why they object, because 
you've not been clear enough in, in, in sharing the benefit that uh, the product offers to them, um, and they want more information. It's nothing personal. They want more information. Um, so yes, it does help if we start with a golden rule, and that is to listen and not interrupt the customer. When you reply to an objection, and the customer is almost sort of halfway through the objection, and you interrupt. Um, no, it's not just rude, but it also does not give them the opportunity to. Um, it does not give them the opportunity to um, to exactly tell you um, what is wrong and what they want more information about. Um, I think it's um, it's it's it shows respect um, towards the. Um, towards the buyer. Uh, we'll get into um, a bit more detail as to um, what the um, implications of an interruption is um, in, in a couple of slides. But um, a very good way to deal with um, an objection is also to often agree with the customer and say, you know what, you've, you've made a very valid point. I've never actually looked at it like that. Um, and then obviously you would have a counter um, um, reply to that. Uh, we'll be looking at each of these that, um, that we have listed there, all the way down to the hidden objection. Um, in, in a bit more detail, let's just have a look at it graphically on the next slide. Um, that's what all the different um, objections or different ways in which we can deal with objections. Uh, we'll have a look at each of these individually, but listening and not interrupting is one way, because then you actually get to the core of the problem. Agreeing to the customer, and then obviously you're replying, just straight on denying it. Oh, I didn't hear it, you're deaf in both ears this morning. Um, there's obviously a forestalling the objection because you don't want them, you, you don't want to um, actually um, reach clarity um, or you're unsure or you don't have enough information so you cannot handle that objection properly. There are hidden objections often by, by customers. Um, there's a, a way that you can actually turn this um, objection into a trial close. Um, one of the classic questions would be, okay, right, so if that's your only objection, sir, then um, would you like to try this product? Uh, yes, a sample. Um, it should um, be enough um, for uh, at least two or three helpings. Um, and then let me give you a call in a couple of days' time. That's a, that's a pot potential trial close, um, a way of closing the, the trial. Um, at that point where the objection is raised, you're not engaging in any further um, justifications or negotiations at that point. Uh, the fact that you've given the product to the customer now to try um, and then following up, but then you have to follow up um, and then call the customer two days later and say, I mean, you were in the shop yesterday or a day ago, I gave you a sample of the product, have you tried it? Um, I'm pretty sure that if you've tried it, you, you would have experienced that it actually has a all the benefits that I've um, that I've told you, uh, how have you experienced it? And then obviously that um, usually um, goes a long way towards closing towards closing the show. Um, right, let's look at each of these individually. Um, firstly, um, we have identified that listening and not interrupting is very very helpful. The most important reason for that is that it actually doesn't deny the buyer the respect that they're entitled to, um, because if you do interrupt, it basically implies that, in your opinion, <laughs> this issue is, is trivial or the objection is a, is a trivial um, issue, um, or that the objection is, 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 is unfounded, it's completely wrong. Um, it's not worth listening to. That's the worst thing. It's almost as like, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah in the background. I mean, I don't even hear what you're saying or objecting because um, people listen, respond, 
often a great way of doing it is to repeat the question that um, um, repeat the objection that they've made just to clarify. Okay, but we'll get into that in, in, in more detail um, as the as the session progresses today. Just to have a look at um, at the time. Okay, we're doing well for time. Um, I'm pretty sure that we'd be able to to finish this chapter today I've, um, over the two sessions. Um, would anybody object to uh, to it if we if we finish a bit earlier today? Nobody? Anybody? You all good? Uh, any yes, objections? Uh, no, since, since we're dealing with uh, objections, <laughs> Corinne, um, any objections if we extend the session to longer than two periods today? Also no objections. Okay. Tough crowd to say. So I, I object to the last one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so <you're> on. <laughs> <laughs> Right, somebody is paying attention. Thank you very much. Um, yes, no, no, we will not extend. Uh, I've, I've got another period after it anyway, so I, I can't extend it. And um, no, um, I'll, I'll see what I can do, but I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to knock up a couple of minutes today and, and give you give you um, an opportunity to take a, a longer break than five minutes between between sessions. Uh, and me, of course, as well. I'm not, I'm not just looking out for you. I'm also I'm, I'm also benefiting benefiting from the fact that um, if it, if I have a slightly longer, maybe a ten minute break instead of five between between uh, periods. Um, right. Therefore, in conclusion, listen carefully, listen with attention, because sometimes you know somebody's you can see somebody's listening to you but there's there's no registration of what actually is being said um and be respectful um always make the person um, who's objecting feel that the objection is a valid one although you know that it probably isn't and although you know that there are very good counter arguments which you will then present in reply but don't um don't make the customer feel immediately as, oh, you know what, are you stupid? Why are you asking such a simple question or, or such, a silly, such a silly question? Right. Another approach would be to just simply agree with the customer, but also counter. Not just agree and say, mm, you know what, it's, it's, what you say makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think this, it's very reasonable what you're requesting, but in other words, you use the yes, okay. So the customer says, "Okay, right, um, it, it was my, it wasn't just um, a hunch. My objection was actually valid because you responding with a yes implies that." But and that's where you now continue and you actually um, can um, very effectively use the but to do some form of reference selling, where. Yes, I hear what you're saying. So you've got a very valid point and it makes a lot of sense. But it should know a study that was recently done has indicated and it has been published in uh, the latest um, car magazine or whatever, or this article in the latest car magazine that actually uh, addresses a specific concern that you've raised. So now you've counted um, without, um, um, you've counted, but you've given validity to the um, to the objection that the customer has raised. Okay, very important to um, always remember that um, the customer still remains the important person to to satisfy. And what you are still doing at the moment by dealing with objections is that you're still providing them with the information that's necessary for them to make that final decision. Um, right back to what we said at the start. An objection is an indication that the customer needs more information and your reply to an objection, how you counter the objection should provide that information. If it doesn't, you've missed an opportunity. It's like going right back to the first step with a first impression. This is a second um, um, part in your process that you can stumble and lose the sale if you do not respond properly. Right. Let's look at another approach, and that is the one of the straight denial. Um, 
I think it's very careful. You need to be very careful as a salesperson and um, not to antagonize the buyer because it can easily happen. Um, it can easily happen when um, you um, when something similar. Let's look at the example on the screen, for instance. Um, the buyer says, "You know what? Um, uh, the car is great, but the upholstery it's it's um, it's it looks as if it's going to be difficult to clean." If you Going to a straight denial reply, you will maybe respond with something like, "Yeah, um, I've 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 been driving a demo like this, and I tell you what, uh, when my son spilled something on the seat yesterday, oh, it's oh, no, it's you're quite right to this. That's a straight um a straight denial, um, or um, you could also say, no, it's actually that's that's not true. It actually cleaned quite quite easily. No." Seeking more factual information is what the customer is is doing when he's objecting to something like this. A response would be, uh, a better response would be to um, to the same situation. But in the same situation would be the response that you have on the screen, where the the salesman then replies and says, "No, no, you know what? Sir? It actually is is actually not that difficult to clean. The material is actually um, developed from a new and some synthetic fiber that actually resists um, stains and it cleans." The, uh, the marks are quite easily if you just use um, a clean cloth and some water and soap it's actually I've, I've tried it myself it works perfectly that would be the correct way of of responding to um, the presented um, objection right let's do another one where am i now um also have okay i'm gonna finish with this one um and then we can actually, um, yeah, we can finish with this one, and then we can continue with um, with the next section of work. Um, just after that, right? The question objection, for instance, or question, how do you question the objection? Oh, remember that um, sometimes it's not even worth. Um, getting in too much trouble to to um, justify or counter the objection because sometimes the information um, that the customer um, or objection that the customer raises is, is just too general. I mean, it's nothing specific um, aimed at a specific feature of the product that they are complaining um, about or that they're objecting to, like we've done in the previous example with the upholstery, for instance. Um, the salesperson um, um, should, excuse me, um, as I said, yeah, hay fever is uh, set in. Um, I know when it's um, spring is unofficially arrived when, um, when I have hay fever. So my apologies if I uh, for the nasal um, for the nasal sound occasionally, but um, a salesperson would like to find out the nature of the objection. So if it's too general, um, no, I just don't like this car. Okay, right, have you driven it? Um, that's a very general um, and common objection. You have no, you, you have not justified why you don't like it. Um, what a salesperson in a situation like that um, could respond or how he could respond would easily be something along the lines of um, what exactly don't you like? So is it the color? Is it the upholstery? I mean, is it the shape? Because we've got different models. Um, then you will be able to return. You have to break this down because um, the obje these common objections or general objections that is that is often raised by a customer um, is is is. Um, uh, because of um, because it's it's so general and generic, um, you need to reply with a, with a series of follow up questions to determine what actually the nature of the problem is. Okay. Nature of my problem at the moment is that I need to get some um, antihistamine in for my um, for my. <laughs> For my hay fever, my apologies, sorry, everybody. Um, and I think at um, at this point and on this note, let's quickly take a break. Um, let's resume in in about five minutes. 
Um, and then we continue and finish uh, chapter eight uh, and deal with the last number of skills that's necessary to um, hopefully help you to become better in um, a potential career in sales. Anybody, any questions at this point? It, does, it doesn't have to be related to the work at, um, that we've done at the moment or that we're busy with. Anything else? Everybody good? All good, sir. All good. Um, let's take a break and resume in five. I'll remain um, um, online um, and uh, I'll just mute. Uh, stop the recording and mute. Um,